know, uh, uh, we grew out of our last place. We used to be at the Double Tree Sea World, which is a wonderful hotel. This hotel. Don't worry, it's just equipment breaking. This hotel, <laughs> Thank you. I think, is above and beyond what we had before, and it certainly gives us a lot more space to deal with. So we're pretty excited about it. As you guys know, as you came in, you saw the uh, reception desk. Uh, I'm going to show you this awesome machine over here because we're so so freaking proud of it. Monica, this is I'm, I'm letting you into the whole the whole techie uh, gamer culture world. He actually purchased it because I guess the box in here, the one that takes money, it's like a super rare one, and it's like worth like 300 bucks or something like that. And I'm like, okay, so we bought this. But then we're like, hey, can we do something fun with it? So this is actually more of a concession. Uh, if you play it, you will win every single time. It's not saying what you're going to win, but it's $3 to play and you allowed to get stickers. We have pins which are priced higher. And all the artwork is done with our character, Miss Citrus, who is kind of our unofficial mascot and a complete ripoff of Miss Pac-Man. Um, but it also plays to what we love, which is that niche Florida. Um, we, we embrace the fact that we are Florida's biggest arcade uh, and pinball expo. Uh, this year's mascot, this year's, I, I should say, just the t-shirt design we went with, is a combination of niche Florida once again with the uh, with the knight wearing Tom, Tommy Bahamas clothes and the flamingo. And um, it's meant to resemble kind of that joust uh, mixed with the Black Knight of the Black Knight 2000 for those of you who like pinball. So yes, there's this, your baby. this is not my size, by the way. I can tell you this right now. But this is, and this was done by a really, really awesome artist. If you get to see him, he's out on the floor, Robo Ono. Um, who did all this stuff uh, for free. He did this artwork for us for free. And that's really the big thing I want you to take away from this today is that this is a nonprofit. Light Amusement's a nonprofit. And we put on this convention because we just want people to have the arcade pinball experience today and we want it to be bigger than what they've ever experienced before. So we do it because we love that, that experience. We want to give it to people. Um, in addition, as part of our nonprofit, we'll see some indie developers today. We give them a free space to show off some of their games. Uh, not, like I said, none of the people on the project actually make any money. We just love this project as a whole. So with that said, we're going to make our way out to the show floor. 18,000 square feet. The entire show is 26,000 square feet this year. So it's much, 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 much bigger. Um, if you come on over here, I have a whole bunch of stickers for you at the end, but I totally forgot to give them to you. Uh, this is one of the groups we've been working with this year. This is Rebel Reprints. Uh, they are a local business, and they have uh, Echo Base. Uh, and they, they, these stickers are free, correct? Yes. So if you guys want any of the stickers, feel free to grab them. They do these really cool nerd designs. So like Ninja Turtles, and they put their logo. And they did all the stickers we're selling this year. Um, they are an awesome local business that we look to support. Uh, if you get a chance, the store is the most awesome store. It's very small. And just graffiti based on all the things we love about the 80s. Right? Yeah. Did they miss anything else? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> they also helped us uh, produce a lot of when we're doing the machines. They, they produced some artwork for some of the machines that were used to decorate when we did our custom cast, which was awesome. Um, over this way, Project Pinball is a nonprofit that puts pinball machines in hospitals so that children have a chance to play pinballs, pinball machines when they are, you know, in, in, in the hospital which is an awesome, awesome charity that we love. They come out every single year. Great human beings. And if I think, if you think of anything that I'm forgetting, please jump in, Rob. What, with these guys? With anything. They're, they're, they're beautiful human beings. They're yeah, beautiful they're human beings. beings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're gonna head over this way, Cosmotron. This is a new kind of indie developed cab. This machine is kind of wackadoo, but it's super, super cool. Um, and this is something that's been kind of talked about in the arcade community around the country, and we were very, very, very lucky to get it out here today. Um, you'll notice a lot of vendors that we go to today. Uh, we have a lot of wonderful people who have participated in the event from year to year. And we're, as we walk by, please appreciate these beautiful, beautiful pinball machines. Actually, can I, uh, Brandon, can I point out one thing with Scott? Why not? Actually, Scott, do you have your Atari cartridge? So Scott yeah, Dayton, oh, good idea. Okay, Scott Dayton still makes Atari cartridges today. So for the original Atari 2600. So this is this is a brand new Atari game uh, for your original 1977 Atari 2600 uh, Cuber Jump. 
and his group, Neo Games, will still develop original Atari 2600 games. And this is kind of one of those things a lot of people don't realize. You can still get, oh yeah, so here's two more that he's done. Um, this one you can get from uh, Neo Games. They also sell it online at atarih.com. Um, and uh, this is a special limited edition Fat Albert that Scott's selling here at the show. And I think, Scott, you just, Scott, you only have this one at the show, right? Okay. Yeah, so limited edition Atari 2600 game. So super cool if you're into retro gaming. All right, this is Ken from Onigaku Overdrive. He does a lot of cool concerts. He has a concert coming up. Can you describe just a little bit about what you do? Yeah, we do shows throughout the year that feature video game bands, chip tunes, nerd core, and more. And the show we got coming up next week, it will be Power Wisdom and Courage. We're going to be celebrating the 20th anniversary of Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and the Zelda franchise in general. We'll have video game setups, live music, live Zelda music specifically, head by, headlined by Bit Brigade. We'll have artists, vendors, uh, drink specials, themed Zelda drinks, costume contests, game tournaments, and more. It's going to be at the Abbey in Orlando, Florida, right by Lake Eola. You can go to OngakuOverdrive.com to find out more about the show and get your tickets. That was good. You rehearsed that. No, I've just done it so many times, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, this will be a really great show if you're a fan of the Legend of Zelda games. You have to be there. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Nobody on planet Earth is doing a show like this. Believe me, I have checked. So definitely be there. Our window this time of year is very nice. You should make a, make a weekend of it. Thank you, Ken. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. You all have a great night. Um, so we're entering the area we kind of call Game Central Station now, which... For those of you who remember the movie film Wreck-It Ralph, Game Central Station was a spot in Wreck-It Ralph where all the games kind of met in the, I guess it was like a surge protector. Yeah. I, I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah. So, we they, the boys set up some of the games they thought fit more the family friendly look, and they um, put their little scoreboards on just like the movie had these different locations that they'd go to different games. That's what they set up. One thing that was really cool about this year is that Disney contacted us and asked if they could come out on Saturday. So tomorrow, Disney's gonna be out here on showcasing Wreck-It Ralph 2, uh, and they're gonna do a 20 minute uh, video, a preview of the film. So we're gonna see 20 minutes of the film. So that was super cool, and they contacted us, and that was awesome because when Disney notices you, they feel kind of like you're on the radar. Um, so we're gonna walk through here, we're gonna see. One of the things that I actually adore the most is, and I wanna take it home, but there's no way I can. This is kind of our recreation of the uh, scene from Stranger Things. Season 2, one of our gentlemen made the giant arcade sign for Stranger Things, and they tried to I love the sign, I want to take it home, but again, I have no place to put that thing. But it's super cool, and it, I believe, I'm told, I haven't stood in one place long enough to see it, but I'm told that if you hang around long enough, it will change into upside down mode. It'll turn like blue and start flickering colors. I don't know if it's on that mode now, but it's supposed to do that at some point in time. So, people who team up with us are crazy. Behind you is our 10 foot tall Tron cabinet that was built by a makerspace in Tampa. It is tremendously heavy and tremendously amazing. Um, I love it. I almost love it as much as the one behind me, which is our 10 foot tall donkey kong. As I understand it, it is the largest donkey kong in existence. Um, and for a guy my size, that makes me feel like a kid again, because I'm literally at that, that size, which I really, really like. I'm gonna take you through this way, and we're gonna see a lot of, you're gonna notice a lot of oddball machines, and that's because this corner around here has a lot of oddball machines. One of my favorites, and if nothing else, if you get a chance to play any game, please take the time to play Star Trigon. It's this awesome game where all you do is fly around planets, creating shapes, creating, linking the planets up, and everything's done with just one button. It's super, super cool. I believe, if I remember right, it's connected to the Mr. Driller series, which Mr. Driller, if you don't know, is the son of the main character from Dig Dug. So there's a big connection to us old school gamers. It all comes back around. Yeah, that's Mr. Driller right there. Other than that, you're gonna notice a lot of machines you may not have seen before. Um, and next, we're gonna go through in the alley. So these, again, these are people who we've given a spot to, we've given a table to just so they can show off their games, because much like us, 
this is a project of passion. Their games that they're developing, right here in Central Florida, are projects of passion. These guys have to love what they're doing because they put countless hours to try to develop these games. Above you, you can see we're, we're entering two kind of separate areas. We have what we call Metro City, where we have a lot of the beat-em-up games. Uh, Ninja Turtles, a lot of the things where they're just punching people and doing that type of thing. And then this goes into what we call kind of our Neo Tokyo Alley. That's why you see the power lines and a lot of that stuff going on here. So as we go through, please take a, take a peek, take a card from some of these indie developers who are doing these awesome, awesome things. One of the games we've really show, liked showcasing this year is Wiffle Blasters. It's literally a multiplayer game where people just get really angry at each other throwing wiffle balls at each other. That's literally it, right? Yeah, that's, for the most part, uh, you uh, can uh, grab this one. So, um, basically, uh, yeah, okay. Okay. use the right stick to aim, right trigger is shooting, and uh, you only get one shot unless you get a ball that respawns and tap. Uh, basically, the rest of the controller is just slapping X, Y, right bumper. Uh, so you can slap each other once you run out of bullets. Um, if you like with wiffle balls, this is the game for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's meant to be a yeah. short form. Just, just drop in and, and, and play a quick round. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, it lends itself a lot to sort of that couch uh, multiplayer. Yeah, getting people back together in one place to play a video game. Yeah. Nothing wrong with online. If you haven't met, this is Remy. He is one of the biggest personalities in the indie development in uh, Central Florida. And he's been with us the longest. And this is his game, Lombie in the Sleepy Planet. Yep, and you just beat it in front of everyone. Uh, so he just finished a tutorial, or the actual game. Uh, so Floppy and the Sleepy Planet is an open world platformer game. Uh, it's actually being developed right now for Nintendo Switch. Uh, he plays this little robot rabbit named Floppy. He's crash land on his planet. Uh, he's lost all of his memories. Uh, you're trying to help him repair his spaceship. And by doing that, uh, you're learning more about this planet. So we saw everything in a narrative, kind of like a German storybook approach. And uh, Floppy learns more about this very strange world he crash lands on as he plays through repairing his spaceship. Uh, and I'll show you a quick little demo. So the big thing with Floppy is he's this little robotic rabbit, and it's all about you aim jumping with your with your precision jump. So you can go ahead and aim yourself and jump everywhere. So we have a collect the dog style game where you have to collect these power nodes that unlock things in the game, very similar to like Mario Odyssey or Mario Galaxy, uh, where you're collecting stars. Uh, in this game, you're collecting literally cabbage because you're a rabbit. And these are his memory fragments you're collecting along the way. This is a tutorial, so it's a little bit lengthy, it's a little bit wordy. It shows you just how to play the basic game. A beautiful looking game. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we do have the Switch dev kit. We showed this game off at California back at GDC. We showed it to a couple of private publishers and uh, to Nintendo and Sony directly. Uh, Nintendo really loved it. They felt this is a great game for their audience. Uh, so they gave us access to our dev kit. We had a lot of publishers that were very interested but said come back when you have more. Uh, this is Vertical Slice 2. This is the board. So this is the first public revealing of all the new stuff since March of last year. And we actually focus on the narrative structure of the game, which is uh, the biggest new thing that we have. So let me just mash this tutorial and then I'll show you the big new view. So you may have noticed um, charge jumping. Uh, that's the main mechanic of our game where you get to aim and shoot yourself everywhere like a living golf ball. Even though it's still an open world um, type of game where you can still run and jump, it's all about um, the aim of your jump. Uh, so currently it's still in development. Uh, the goal right now is that we're using today's event to gauge what people think of it. Uh, 
then we're going to do a little bit more updates and polish to it. And after the updates and polish, we're then going to go to California again, show publishers, and hopefully we can get some investment in the game itself. After we have investment, I'm hoping for a year and a half. Without investment, it's going to be much longer because uh, my other business partner is walking around right now, but we're a small team. All the artwork you see in here, 3D-wise, is all me. I make all the level design and all the 3D for the game primarily, uh, as well as a lot of gameplay concepts. It's a lot of work. So, yeah, hope, hoping that publisher will be more receptive to the game. A huge collection of pinball machines this year, which meant that a lot of us, not myself, because that's a lot of work, but a lot of people went around trying to grab pinball machines because the pinball scene has really exploded locally and really around the country. So they've done an awesome job this year of filling up trucks and bringing them in. We're gonna pass Circus Maximus. Circus Maximus is this really cool company here. They take old pinball machines that were made in limited runs or pinball machines that were only ever made like on blueprint form and never actually created and they create them. Um, so that's gonna be this group right here. So, if you don't know James, James is the angry video game nerd. Uh, he's been doing YouTube a very long time. Since 2006. Yeah, right? So, so he was one of the ones who really made it what it is. I think. And he's very humble. And most people watch your videos. She's the only one who's not a lot of videos. <laughs> but uh, amazing, amazing guy, and this is your first year at the event, and we really appreciate him coming on. here a lot of amazing pinball machines if you if you haven't had a chance to get on some of these ones the Pirates of the Caribbean is flipping amazing in the technology it's got two pinball we were one of the first place to get it last year and I just think it's the coolest game in the world Deadpool pinball which is super new as well literally just came out a few months ago uh, is an awesome game a lot of these guys, they do multiple versions of the game. Pinball machines are expensive, but some people want the premium version, so they're willing to spend the money. Um, 
something interesting and exhausting that happened today. Uh, as many of you guys know, the California, the wild, the wildfire fires in California. Um, one of our guests, Bruce Boxleitner, which was, like, was our headliner this year, uh, had to cancel because he's literally being evacuated because of the wildfires. So we found out about that this morning, and since then, we worked extra, extra hard. The whole team got together, and we were able to secure Cindy Morgan, who played the female lead in uh, uh, Tron. And for the gentleman in the group, uh, she, she was in Caddyshack. And if you're a guy in the, the group, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, that being said, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Warren Davis isn't around right now, but Warren Davis is the guy who developed q -Burk. Uh, one of my all-time favorite games, it's right up there with Rampage to me. Hubert, uh, just a wonderful character who's now showing up in movies like Pixels and Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, he's definitely, a, I would say, one of the top five most famous arcade characters for old people, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and gals too. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's super. He's super cool. I just met him for the first time, and this is year number one for Warren. So, super excited. Over here is the, is the Nathan Bar Barnett booth featuring my parents. No way, no, his brother. His brother. His brother. <laughs> brother. Featuring my brother and my mom and the and the uh, Keith Apicary slash Nathan Barnett booth. If you don't know him, <laughs> just look up a YouTube video. It'll explain everything. That's his body pillow. It has two sides. Hey, young girl. Yeah, so that's probably the more appropriate side. He's the retro game whiz. He loves Neo Geo. He loves Virtual Boy because everybody loves Virtual Boy. Um, and he's just a really stellar guy. And he'll be around later, so you can see him. This turtles was turtles in time. I think was even better. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is yeah. for the younger generation. They're the turtles. I guess they're back. I'm giving a press tour. I'll just go you guys. Hey. friend Patrick Riley and George Lowe. Hello. Hey. Welcome to our contest. Thank you every day. You're welcome. Voice of Space Ghost. And I, at this point, once I introduce him, we kind of just let him go. He used to be three feet tall. Thanks to Space Ghost man vitamins. There you go, girls. He's all meat now. Uh, mixture. What's going on over here? Hey there. How are you? How are you? Hello, shut-ins. <laughs> Don't you wish you were here having fun? Come on out with the big dog. That's right. Thank you, George. Oh, no, no. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, really. I have to... He goes off. I, we just wind him up. That's all we do. <laughs> I have to show this off. It's something that's been forgotten. I played this game for the first time in a, uh, in I think it's eight, 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 eight before I went into the movie. I can't stress this enough. The game's not good. But at the time, it was fun. It was all like holographic hackers. Do you, you touch this? I don't even know if that's going to show up on camera. It's a weird game. It's a very strange game. I had to show it off. Uh, we're gonna head over this way. This, this is our wonderful press people. Okay. And this is the most amazing machine. This is Roxy Kong for those of you Star Wars fans. Uh, well, first of all, Roxy is Roxy the Rancor. You can see Roxy's head right over here. Roxy does have the rest of her body. It's, it's a sheet. Uh, it's a 14 foot tall Rancor that we set up at conventions and stuff. And for fun, we made a special version of the game using. Roxy and Luke and Ula, and it's, it's a playable game. We have the special cabinet built for it, and we use it to raise money for charity. People donate money, and we have, with both with Roxy and the game, we've raised thousands and thousands of dollars around the country uh, for children's charity. That's wonderful. But you can play, you can see, you can play just like normal games. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, you go, you gotta save Ula. There, you know, Ula. We, and after, you can see up here where. The actress who played Ula has, uh, well, in Kentucky, got to play the game and she autographed the cabinet for us. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, 
I guess that's all I can think of. <laughs> Country. It's also still in Saran Wrap. So this is Marble Man. Marble Man is the sequel to Marble Madness, and this is never really produced. This is they were, it's just a prototype. Has anyone played Marble Madness before? Oh yeah. It's literally madness. It's literally something that will drive you mad. So this is the sequel to Marble Madness that was never really mass produced. So there's two of these in the country, one on the West Coast. This is the only one on the East Coast, and it's the only one that's set up for three players. So we're gonna have this out this weekend. It's a super, super, super cool thing. It's not up right now. I, I'm imagining that someone has something special to do with it, but it's a very, very cool thing that's coming out this weekend. Uh, so I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. It's Atari. It's cool, right? There you go. That's awesome. Artist Alley. We have curated what is the finest artists in Orlando and brought them into one spot. This is my friend. This is Robo Ono, Ken. And this is the art of Hump, Humphrey. Um, you can check out the artists going through. My friend Bear Biggers is not here right now, he has tremendous stuff. Just to kind of talk to them and tell them a little bit about <laughs> hey what they do. Yeah, um, I got this booth here is um, all the pre-war pinballs and pre-war is actually you know from 1931 up until about 1941 uh, in 1931 they, they they just all purely mechanical machines and then after that they started doing some dry cell batteries and then in the late 30s is when they came off the electricity so all, all these games here you know, I got them all set on free play you can all you know, try them at your, at your leisure if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions. How much did they cost back in the day? Back in the day, if you look at some of the, the um, literature that's up there, they, those are actually flyers from the magazines in the 30s. And some of them were $19, some were 20 some were 25 depending on... Is it like a penny to play? Penny or a nickel. Penny or a nickel. Yep, either one. Okay. That's highway robbery. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a lot of time back in the 30s, it was... You know, they were basically gambling machines, so they need to pay you for cash, or most of the times in the 30s, it was cigarettes. You get paid for cigarettes. Oh, right. The cigarettes. Yeah. 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 And this has very quickly become one of the most popular exhibits in Free Play Florida. How many years have you been coming to Free Play? Uh, I've been coming to Free Play since so the start So five years? Well, well yeah, I mean, well, it used to be Southern Pinball. That's right. There, there, there was a project yeah. before this. and yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I've been coming since it started. And, I've and each year it's gotten the, bigger. Yeah, I've been bringing the 30s machines for four years now. It's the fourth year. I started off with six games just to see how people would like. Then I doubled that, doubled it again last year, and then this year I went to 50 games. Yeah, and that's one of the wonderful things about being in this new space, is that now we have the luxury to add even more of these awesome pre-war That's games. awesome. They gave me a lot of space. Yeah, I should point out, the most miraculous thing about Jeff is all these machines you see here, I went out when he when he opened up the back of the trailer. He has a regular size trailer. It's just not like yeah, six by ten, and I double decorated it. So. He fit all these machines in one trailer. Oh my god! Which is I don't know how he did it, but he's got it down to a science at this point. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. You're, you're, you're probably really good at Tetris. Too, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an engineer, so that, yeah. thank you, sir. Thanks, guys. It's based on the Nintendo arcade model. And it's for anybody who likes the Nintendo version of Tetris. Um, and then finally, uh, these, our sponsors Echo Base produce some stickers. It's a little Tron character, but it looks like a Pac-Man character. So. And you are welcome to have any of these. I'll grab a few when okay. you have yeah, yeah. Thank you. Again, really cool company. If you ever, especially for our vloggers, if you get a chance just to go out there, this is such a cool place. There you go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's cool. So, I just want to thank all of you guys for, guys, guys for coming out tonight. I hope I was informative. I know I probably gave you, like, just a fraction of what's going to be going on this weekend. I encourage you, if you're around tonight, 
Uh, at 10 o'clock tonight, we're going to be doing Chill Screen with Nathan Barnett, where uh, he's going to jump in an ice bath and compete in Sonic Mania against Tom Van. Who Tom Van, if you don't know, he's part of the Tom and Dan Show. Um, and it's a very popular local radio show, and they're going to compete. And then after that, at um, 11, is our pajama party, um, where if you wear pajamas, you can have an extra hour inside the arcade. And then finally, anybody who wants to hear ghost stories, our good friend Nathan Barnett, from midnight to 2 in the morning, is going to tell ghost stories. We have blueberry uh, cereal that we're going to eat. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's what we're doing today. So, uh, and then the awesome stuff throughout the whole weekend. I thank everybody for coming out and doing the tour. I thank Rob for coming along. No problem. I appreciate it. Uh, and everybody enjoy the rest thank of your day at Freeplay Florida. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll do an air clap. Air clap. Yeah.